When it comes to selling branded products on Amazon, so many people get stuck with not being able to sell them on Amazon because of issues surrounding brand approval, brand registry, trademarking, which one to apply for and how to apply for them. So in this video, I'm gonna demystify all of this for you. I'll explain which one you need to apply for in your specific situation, the exact steps you need to follow to apply for them, as well as some common mistakes that people make all the time that get applications rejected. All right, let's start with brand approval. Most people aren't aware of this, but there's actually two types of brand approval. The first has to do with gated products. This is where so many beginners make a mistake that end up costing them a ton of money. You can't just buy some items from your local retailer like Target or Walmart and expect to be able to sell them on Amazon. Gated products are products sold on Amazon under a brand like Nike or Cuisinart that require you to get brand approval before you can sell them. Brand approval may be required for not just name brands, you may need to get brand approval for private label brands too. You can check if a product requires brand approval in Seller Central. For example, let's say you found this Nivea skin cream on sale somewhere and you want to resell it on Amazon. In Seller Central, click on Add Products and in the Product ID option, enter the UPC barcode that's found on the bottle here. Click Submit. You can see that it says here, Approval Required. You need approval to sell this product. And if you click on Apply to Sell on this next page, it says, you need approval to sell Nivea branded in new, used, refurbished, collectible conditions. So in order for you to be able to sell this product on Amazon, you need to apply and get approval first. And in order to get approval, you need to provide the following documentation. Submit at least one purchase invoice for products from a manufacturer or distributor. That means you can't just buy this product from your local retail store or online. Retailers and online stores only provide receipts. The only way you can get an invoice is to purchase directly from the manufacturer or from an authorized wholesaler or distributor. And the only way you can do that is if you have a registered business and a resale certificate. You won't get approval if you provide receipts. The invoice also needs to meet all of these requirements here. Most notably, it says here, to sell this Nivea skin cream, you need to show the combined purchase of at least 100 units. <laughs> so as you can see, if you plan to do arbitrage or sell wholesale products, before you invest any money on products, make sure you check to see if you need brand approval first and that you can meet all of the requirements to get brand approved so that you don't get stuck with inventory that you can't sell on Amazon. The second type of brand approval is if you want to sell your own branded products such as if you're selling private label products under your own brand. The process isn't that difficult, but you do need to follow some specific steps. However, a common misconception is that you need to have a registered trademark to sell under your brand. Well, you don't. In fact, you don't have to enroll in brand registry. And I'm gonna show you how you can quickly and easily get your brand approved so that you can list your products using your own brand. And more importantly, not list them as generic. A huge mistake that people make that will hurt you in the long run, which I'll explain in more detail in a minute. So in order for you to use your own brand without a trademark, what you need to do is go through a process called brand approval. And in order to trigger that process, the first thing that you need to do is create a new product listing, even if you're not ready to start selling yet, or even if you don't have a product to sell. So log into Seller Central, and at the top of the page here, click on Add Products. Or if you don't see this option, click on Menu, Catalog, Add Products. And since you want to list your own branded products, these are typically private label products, do not search for a product using the Keywords option here. You must choose the Blank Form option here. Then on this page, enter the item name. This is the title that you see for any product on Amazon, as you can see here in this example. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to describe what the product is you can always go back and edit this later. So in this case, I'm just gonna make something up for the purpose of this video. Now, in the product type field, choose the category for your product. Now, it should automatically choose the category for you, but if it's not correct, then click on select other and choose the right one. In this case, it's the wrong category, so I'm gonna click on select other and manually choose the correct category. Okay, now here's the most important part you need to follow these next steps exactly. In the brand name field, here's where you need to enter your brand. 
This is the brand name that you wanna use and get approved to sell under. Again, you don't need to have a registered trademark for this brand. This is just the brand name that you want to use to sell your products on Amazon. So for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna make up a name here. Now, make sure you do not check this option here. This product does not have a brand name. If you check this box, this indicates that you want to list this product as generic and you do not want to do that. So do not check this box. This is a huge mistake too many people make as I mentioned earlier. If you choose this option, your product will be listed as generic without a brand name like you can see in this example here. You don't want to do that. In fact, I highly suggest never listing your product as generic as it's going to create a whole bunch of problems for you. The biggest problem is that you won't be able to change it to a brand in the future. If you do decide to brand it later on, you'll have to start all over by creating an entirely new listing and you'll end up losing all of the work that you've done. You'll lose all of your reviews, all the sales history, the listing rank, basically everything, so don't do it. Now in the product ID field, here's where you need to enter the UPC barcode that you purchased. Now, buying barcodes, where to buy them from, and how many that you need to buy is an entirely different topic on its own. So I'll leave a link in the description below to a detailed video if you wanna learn more about it. But a quick overview, do not buy your UPC barcodes from third-party sellers. Only buy them directly from GS1. They only cost $30 each, and if you don't buy them directly from GS1, you can have your listing shut down, as you can see here. And I also want to point out that you do not want to choose this option here. I don't have a product ID. This option applies for what's called a GTIN or G10 exemption. And again, you do not want to do this. It'll create other problems and hassles for you, and you won't be able to change it to a UPC in the future. So do not do this just to save $30. It's not worth it. So enter your barcode here, choose UPC, then click on next. Now, notice that this error just popped up. Brand name approval required. You have entered a brand name that has not been approved by Amazon. You need to apply for approval to list products using this brand name. So here's where we've triggered the brand approval process that we're looking for. You need to go through this brand approval process in order to use your brand on Amazon to sell your branded products. Now, once you've completed this approval process and you get approved, you can come back to this listing and complete it. Now, if for whatever reason, when you create your new listing and you don't see this error message prompting you to go through the approval process, then you'll have to get to the brand approval page using a different method. So on the top of the page here, click on help, get help and resources, scroll down to the bottom and click on my issue is not listed. Then type in error 5665 and click on continue. Choose the first option here, received an error code or message. Then choose the first option here, error 5661, 5665, brand name authorization. Now, you can see that it's telling you to create a new listing and basically go through all the steps that I just showed you earlier. And then when the brand approval error pops up, then go through the brand approval process. But since that didn't pop up, you can see it says here, if you are unable to create the error or if the selling application is not available, click on create a case and provide the required information in the next step so that we can assist you further. So in this situation, click on the create a case button here. Now, basically this form that you see here is the same form that you'll normally see if the error message did pop up. So now that you know how to get to this page, let's head on back to the previous page and continue from there. Okay, so back on the add a new product page, when this error pops up, click on apply to sell. All right, so now we're on the brand approval application form. You can see that it says here, brand approval for Acme Outdoors. This is a brand approval application for Acme Outdoors. Brand names need to be approved by Amazon before they can be used by sellers. And again, if you do have a registered trademark, it says here, are you a brand owner and have a registered or pending trademark? You may be eligible to enroll in brand registry. Please leave this workflow and enroll in brand registry instead. So if you do have a registered or pending trademark, you do not go through this brand approval process. You need to enroll in brand registry, which will give you access to much more advanced selling features, such as brand protection and A plus content. 
I have a video that goes through how to enroll in brand registry, and I'll leave a link to that video down in the description below. Okay, so in this first field, if you have a website for your brand already, you can enter the URL here. If you have a website, it will make the brand approval process much easier and faster with Amazon. But as you can see, this is optional, so you don't have to go through the trouble of creating one if you don't already have one. Now, in the Submit Documents section, this is where you need to provide photos of your product with your branding on it to prove that you are the brand owner. You need to make sure that you follow these four guidelines exactly or you will get denied. You need to provide at least two images of your brand's product and packaging. And the documents must meet the following requirements. Product pictures should not be blurry or truncated. The text and images, like the brand, must be legible. The branding on your product or packaging must match exactly. Differences in capitalization are allowed. This should be pretty self-explanatory, but so many people often screw this up. The branding that's on your product must match exactly what you entered in your application. So for example, I entered Acme Outdoors. So I can't say Acme Outdoors as one word or Acme Dash Outdoors or some other variation of the name. It must be Acme Space Outdoors. The pictures are taken by you and the items are handheld or placed on a table. Digitally altered or Photoshopped images will result in your application being declined. Again, these must be real life photos, not fake or Photoshop photos, like photos of your product where you Photoshopped your branding or logo on it. That's not gonna work. I've found that it helps if you're actually holding the product rather than just having photos of it on a table. Just make sure that your hand or fingers aren't covering your brand, the logo, or the barcode. Now, I probably shouldn't suggest this because so many people get this wrong and end up getting their application rejected, but I've had my students get away with photoshopping their logos on their products. They had to go this route because they didn't have a product yet or their manufacturer didn't have their products ready for them to take photos of it with their brand on it. And I must stress here that if you do Photoshop your brand on the product, the final image must look 100% real. That means if you showed this image to 100 people, none of them would be able to tell that it was Photoshopped. I've seen so many people attempt to Photoshop it themselves or have a friend do it that has poor Photoshopping skills and the final result was just terrible. So again, unless the final result is indistinguishable from a real photo, do not attempt this strategy. So if you don't have a product to take real photos of, then ask your supplier if they can make a sample unit with your branding on it. However, keep in mind that this is unlikely because most of the time it'll be cost prohibitive, but it never hurts to ask. Or if you're in the middle of manufacturing, have your manufacturer pull the first unit off the production line and expedite the shipping to you so that you can take photos of it. And here's a little secret tip, which I've actually done in the past. A third option is, if you're having custom packaging done, such as a custom design box, then have the box printed out and take photos of the box following these guidelines. And since you don't have to take photos of what's inside the box, you don't actually have to have your product inside it. Make sense? And to go even further, you don't even have to have a real box made. Print out the box design on your color printer in high resolution and glue it to a generic box so that it looks like a real product packaging. Just make sure that you do a good job so that it doesn't look like a grade school art project. Next, the branding must be stamped, stitched, printed, or stick on the product and or packaging so that it's not easily removable. If apparel or jewelry, branded hang tags are acceptable. What this means is your branding or logo must be permanent. It can't be a sticker label. So like I said earlier, if you're designing a custom box, then your branding or logo must be printed on the box. If not, then it must be directly printed or molded into the product like you can see here in this example. And this last guideline here doesn't apply because you're not going to apply for a G10 exemption. Okay, so check mark these options to verify that you followed these guidelines. And once you have those photos ready, you can upload them here. What I suggest is actually uploading three or four photos, not just the two that it suggests. Take photos from different angles and from several different sides of your product so that they can see all around your product. Make sure the lighting is good and that it's in focus. And a pro tip here, Although it doesn't say that it's required, it seems to help if you also show the UPC barcode in the photos. Now, enter your email address here. It's required. 
And although it says your phone number is optional, I suggest including it here so that if they do need to contact you, it's often much easier to clarify any issues when you can speak to an agent directly over the phone. Then click on submit and wait. And be patient here. This process can take several days to over a week. And again, if you get a notification that your application was denied, then follow the suggestions in the notification, fix the problems and resubmit the application. And like I said before, 99% of the time, the applications are rejected due to the photos. So if you do get rejected, take better photos and resubmit your application. And don't worry, just keep trying until you do get accepted. And once your brand is approved, you won't have to go through this process again. You can list all of your future products under that brand regardless of what category it's in. But that doesn't mean that you'll be allowed to sell in any category that you want. You still have to get category approval if the category is gated. Okay, so once your brand is approved, you can go back and complete the product listing that you started earlier. Okay, so now that we've covered the two types of brand approval, the third option is brand registry. Enrolling in brand registry has massive benefits as an Amazon seller. And enrolling in brand registry is painless if you follow three simple steps that I'm gonna show you in this video. And right now, Amazon is offering $50,000 worth of savings for new sellers that enroll in Amazon brand registry, which I'll go over later on in this video. Okay, so to get started with enrolling in brand registry, head on over to brandservices.amazon.com and click on get started. As you can see here, it says, you can get started in three steps, but in order to enroll, there are some eligibility requirements that you need to have before you can begin your application. So you can see here, in order to enroll in brand registry, first, brands must have a pending or registered and active text-based or image-based trademark. To be eligible for Amazon brand registry, your brand must have an active registered trademark in each country where you wish to enroll or have a pending trademark application filed. So what that means is before you can enroll in brand registry, you have to first register for a trademark. The trademark doesn't have to be active. You can enroll in brand registry even if your application is still pending. This is a huge benefit because in the past, in order to enroll in brand registry, you had to wait until your trademark was approved and active, which can take six to eight months or longer. Now, once you've applied for your trademark and get your application number, you can enroll in brand registry right away and reap the benefits without having to wait six to eight months. Okay, so before registering your trademark, what you need to do first is make sure you're even allowed to sell on Amazon. So if you haven't already, sign up as a new seller on Amazon, get your new seller account verified, and make sure you have an Amazon professional plan if you want to take advantage of all of brand registry's features. Now, signing up and getting a verified seller account isn't a simple process to navigate, and a lot of beginners end up getting stuck or their application denied. So if you wanna learn how to get your seller account verified as easily and quickly as possible, I'll leave a link to a detailed video down in the description below. Okay, so once you have a verified seller account, let's move on to step two, registering your trademark. Now, registering your trademark is actually a pretty straightforward process. You can actually apply yourself by going to uspto.gov and follow the step-by-step -step instructions that you see here. Now, of course, when you apply for your trademark, you're gonna need to have a brand name that you want to register. You can register either the name of your brand, meaning the text form of your brand, like you can see here in this example, or you can register the image-based mark or logo that represents your brand, or you can register both. You can see that it says here that the trademark must be in the form of a text-based mark, word mark, or an image-based mark with words, letters, or numbers, design mark. What that means is, for example, if your brand is Pepsi or Target, you can register the text form of your brand, which is just the letters or words that make up the brand, or you can register the logo or image that represents your brand or both. What I recommend is registering both at the same time so that you can use both have brand protection for both, and save on time and money by not having to update your trademark later on in the future. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the trademark application process can take six to eight months or longer to get approval since USPTO is so backed up. You can see here that if you apply today, they're currently processing applications that were submitted over six months ago. <laughs> yeah, talk about backed up. All right, so what does it cost to apply for a trademark? Well, it isn't too expensive. As you can see here, it only costs $250 per class. However, Amazon currently has a ton of new seller incentives, which I'll go over later on in this video, where you can get huge discounts and rebates 
essentially making the trademark application free. And who doesn't like free? And one thing I wanna point out, if you decide to apply for the trademark on your own and you end up messing up the application, it will delay your application and it can result in you having to pay penalty fees. So if you're not comfortable with doing it yourself, Amazon has a service called IP Accelerator where you can hire a vetted law firm to help do it for you. Or you can find a lawyer on fiverr.com or legalzoom.com. You can even find someone local to you, just do a Google search. Now, hiring someone will typically cost around $400 to $800 on top of the trademark registration fee. So do your research and choose which option is best for you. Okay, once you've applied for your trademark, you'll be issued an application number right away. And once you have that trademark registration number, you can move forward with step three, enrolling in brand registry. So scroll down to the bottom of the page here and click on enroll now and let's begin. On this first step, you're gonna see this option here, enroll a new brand. Now, if you haven't registered your trademark, you can register through the Amazon IP Accelerator program by choosing this option here. Otherwise, click on enroll your brand. All right, so now as you can see, we're on the first step of three. The first thing you need to do is enter your brand name here. And here's where a lot of people make a mistake. This is the brand name that you trademarked, not your Amazon store name or your business name. It needs to match exactly what you registered on your trademark application, letter for letter. See here it says, please enter your trademark name. This includes the preferred form of capitalization for your brand name. Next, upload a brand logo. Again, if you registered a mark or logo on your trademarked application, then upload the same mark or logo here. If you didn't, then just upload a mark or logo that you want to use on Amazon. But take note, the logo must represent your brand and should fill the entire image or be on a white or transparent background. If you don't have a logo, upload a high resolution image of your brand name. Do not upload images of your product. Okay, now select the trademark office that you registered with. In most cases, you registered through USPTO, so choose United States. Then enter the trademark registration number that you received when you filed your application and click verify. Now, specify if you own the trademark that you're submitting. If you do own the trademark, in most cases you do, so select the first option here. If you don't own the trademark, then choose one of the other two options that apply. Now, upload a copy of the trademark registration certificate, filing receipt, filing notice, filing certificate or e-filing of the application that you received here. Once you've done that, choose the categories that describe the type of products that you'll be selling under your brand. Make sure to select all the categories that apply. Now in the product information section, if you've already listed your products on Amazon, enter the ASINs here. You can find the ASIN from the manage inventory page under the product name. It starts with a B0. Now, although it doesn't say so, entering an ASIN is optional. So if you don't have any products, just leave this blank. Next, this is also optional. If you have a website for your brand, enter the website URL here. If you don't have one, that's okay. So don't go through the trouble of creating one. Having one just helps with verifying that you are the brand owner. And if you're selling your product on other websites or marketplaces, such as eBay or Walmart, you can enter those URLs here. Again, this is also optional. All right, and in the product images section, it's very important that you do this properly. You need to upload at least one photo of your product that clearly shows your brand permanently affixed to it. Your branding needs to be either on the product itself or on the packaging. It can't be Photoshopped or be a sticker or a label. You could read the exact requirements by clicking on this link here. A lot of applications are rejected because they didn't follow these guidelines here, so make sure you read through these. Now, if you don't have your product yet, which most beginners don't, then what you can do is ask your supplier if they can make a sample unit with your branding on it. However, this might not be possible because it's most likely going to be cost prohibitive, but it never hurts to ask. Or if you're in the middle of manufacturing, have your manufacturer pull the first unit off the production line and expedite the shipping to you so that you can get photos taken of it. Or a third method, and here's a little secret tip which I've actually done in the past. If you're having custom packaging done, such as a custom design box, then have the box printed out and take photos of the box following the guidelines. And since you don't have to take photos of what's inside the box, you don't actually have to have your product inside. <laughs> Make sense? And another option here is you don't even have to have a real box made. 
Print out the box design on your color printer in high resolution and glue it onto a generic box so that it looks like the real product packaging. Just make sure to do a good job so it doesn't look like a grade school art project. So upload at least one photo. I suggest actually uploading two or three. And once you've done that, click on next. Now on step two, you need to provide your business information. First, choose whether you're a seller or a vendor. In most cases, we are the seller of the brand that we're enrolling, so choose seller. Then select the Amazon seller account that you're enrolling the brand for. Now, enter your business details here. So in the first field, choose which state you registered your business in. If you didn't register a business, then choose the state where you live. And enter the city and zip code here. Then choose the type of identifier you want to use to prove that your business is registered and enter that number here. You should be able to find these details on your business license. Then click next. Okay, and now on the final step, you need to specify how you're currently manufacturing and distributing your products. In the first part, for most of us, we're selling private label products. So we're manufacturing our own products with manufacturers overseas, like in China. So choose, I have my own manufacturing. Now, since we're not actually manufacturing the products ourselves, we're hiring a third party to make them for us. You don't need to upload anything here. Now upload a copy of your invoice. This is the invoice you would have received from your supplier or manufacturer, proving that you bought and paid for your inventory. And here's where a lot of people make another huge mistake. This must be an actual invoice. A pro forma invoice or a receipt will not work here. You can see that it says, upload a copy of any recent sourcing, manufacturing, supply invoice, one or more, published in the last six months, which includes one or more of your brand's products names. So make sure it's within the last six months and the invoice lists your brand and products on it. It must show your brand. Okay, in the distribution information section, for most of us, we're selling the products ourselves. We're not wholesaling the products to distributors. So choose no here. And since we chose no, we don't have to fill in this field here. And last, the licensee information. Does your brand license trademarks to others who manufacture products associated with your intellectual property? Again, for most of us, we're selling the products ourselves. We're not licensing it to other sellers or manufacturers. For example, Nintendo owns the Mario Brothers brand and trademark, and they license it to other sellers and manufacturers to make Mario Brothers products and merchandise. We're not doing that, so choose no. Okay, and once you've done that, click submit and wait. The approval process usually takes around four to seven days, but it can take longer. So check up on it every few days. And if for whatever reason, it takes longer than a few weeks, then contact brand registry support, not seller support. And keep in mind, in some rare instances, you may need to reapply. And once you're approved, don't forget to take advantage of all of the new seller incentives that I mentioned earlier. The biggest and probably the single most important benefit of brand registry is that it gives you brand protection. This is gonna help stop 99% of hijackers and counterfeiters who can completely destroy your sales. Not only that, brand registered sellers get access to A plus content and A plus content allows you to create detailed, information rich and themed product listings. For example, as you can see here, Sellers that aren't enrolled in brand registry have low quality, boring product descriptions. However, once enrolled in brand registry with A plus content, you can create beautifully themed product descriptions like you can see here. You can include header images, infographics, more product details, and even product comparisons to promote your other products. In fact, by having A plus content, you can increase your conversion rate by as much as three to 5%. Now, if that's not enough, Brand Registry also has a huge host of other benefits. As a brand registered seller, you can access new seller incentives. So check this out. You can get started with $50,000 in incentives. Get 10% back on your branded sales. That means you'll get 10% back on your first $50,000 in branded sales. Then 5% back through your first year until you reach $1 million. That's a massive savings. Basically, you're cutting the Amazon fees you would normally have to pay, which is around 15%, down to 5%. You also get a $200 credit on Amazon Vine. That makes enrolling your product in Vine to get your first 30 reviews absolutely free. That's a huge advantage since reviews play a huge role in giving your product social proof and increasing your sales. You also get a bunch of discounts and rebates, as you can see here. But it doesn't end there. Two additional massive benefits you get is a $400 credit that you can apply to your FBA inbound placement service fee. 
This is a new fee that Amazon has added whenever you're shipping your inventory to Amazon's warehouse when you're doing FBA. So that's a huge savings. And the second massive benefit is you get a brand referral bonus. That means if you drive traffic from outside of Amazon, Amazon will reduce your referral fee by 10%. They're offering you this huge discount because you did all of the work to make the sale. Amazon didn't have to do anything to put your product in front of shoppers. That's another massive savings, dropping the referral fee from 15% down to 5%. You also get access to branded PPC advertising avenues. So in addition to running sponsored product ads, you can also run sponsored branded ads. These are the ads that you see at the very top of the search results where you can showcase your brand and multiple products. You can also create your very own brand store on Amazon. It's like having your very own custom branded website on Amazon where shoppers can find more information about your brand and product lines. And best of all, shoppers won't see any competitors on your brand store. You also get access to create virtual bundles, allowing you to bundle multiple ASINs together without you having to prepackage them as bundles before shipping them to Amazon. You can also create subscribe and save deals. This is where shoppers can get a deal on their purchase and automatically get refills sent to them on a regularly scheduled basis increasing your sales without any extra effort or expense from you. You get access to so many more benefits that I have time to talk about here, but I'll mention one last one, which is brand analytics. The biggest benefit here is you get access to Amazon search term reports. So unlike the search term reports you get from your PPC ad reports, where you can only find what people are searching for in your PPC campaigns, with Amazon search term reports, you can now see what shoppers are searching for outside of just your PPC campaigns. That's a massive game changer to optimizing your sales strategies and boosting your sales. Now, with that said, once you're enrolled in Brand Registry, what products do you sell? The success of your Amazon business is tied solely to the products you choose, and most beginners end up choosing the wrong products. And this video right over here will show you how I found my first winning product.